Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones. How are you today? It's November again, and that means it's time for another round of Kaiju Month, the month where I take a look at giant monsters and their role in video games. Now, last year I did a retrospective on the Rampage series, which is arguably the most iconic Kaiju series in video game history. Well, this year I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and talk about what many people consider the first Kaiju ever made. That's right, folks, today we're looking at video games starring King Kong. I mean, where do you even begin talking about King Kong? This is easily one of the most iconic films of the past hundred years. Released in 1933 and featuring some fantastic stop-motion animation that still looks pretty good to this day, to call King Kong a classic of cinematic history would be a gross understatement. Also, I mean, come on, it got parodied in a Simpsons Halloween special, so you know it's good. Aside from the original movie, this giant ape was brought back in 1976 by producer Dino De Laurentiis, and again in 2005 by famed director Peter Jackson. There's even an upcoming Kong movie called Skull Island that was supposed to be out around the time this episode was made, but it got pushed back to next spring. There have been a few animated TV shows, he faced off against Godzilla, had a mecha version of himself, and even an animated musical adaptation. Seriously, there's a King Kong musical. There shouldn't be any doubt right now that Kong is king, but how has that translated into the world of video games? Well, today I figured I'd go over some of the games starring this great ape. And what better place to start than with the very first King Kong on the Atari 2600? Okay, this may have been a terrible place to start because I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's like Donkey Kong, but worse. King Kong is throwing robot birthday cakes at you, and when you get about halfway through the stage, he's like, EW, HUMAN, and he teleports down to the bottom. I mean, it's not a terrible game, but you'd be better off just playing Donkey Kong. And throwing this out, anyone else think King Kong looks like a failed Christmas cookie? Anyone? Cookie Kong? No? Just me? Alright. The next game I want to talk about was only released in Japan for the original Famicom. King Kong 2, Ikari no Megaton Punch. Did somebody say Megaton? Megaton. Oh. This game was made by Konami, by the way. I'm sure I'm supposed to have a joke there, but I feel like at this point, Konami is just kind of their own punchline. However, this game is freaking awesome! It opens with these adorably cartoony sprite versions of King Kong and Lady Kong giving us a quick setup of plot, and then you play as Kong and you just run around punching stuff or throwing rocks at them. And the soundtrack by Castlevania composer Kinuya Masahira is insanely catchy. I can't imagine why this game was never brought over, but if you ever get a chance to play it, I totally recommend it. And before you ask, no, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be fighting, but I do know occasionally you enter these rooms and suddenly things have a very Zelda feel all of a sudden. Even the music, wouldn't you agree? There was also a sister game to this title called King Kong 2, Yomigero Densetsu, released for MSX, but I didn't play it. You don't play as Kong in that one, so whatever. And now moving on to the 2005 era, we've got Peter Jackson Presents Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. I've gotta be honest, for a licensed game, it's not terrible. The cast of the film all reprise their roles, and you get to play as the humans and as Kong. Unfortunately, I don't have any Kong footage to show you, because while Jack Black and I were chasing after him, we got into a tussle with some raptors, and to save our lives, I lobbed a spirit one, and it was such a sweet and amazing throw that the universe froze time itself, as if to say... Dang, bro, that was a tight shot. I kinda wish I'd gotten more footage, but it'd been a while since I'd saved, and I was already about an hour in, but overall, trust me, the game is not bad. The only frustrating thing about it is ammo is super limited, so most of your fighting will be done by frantically picking up whatever you can and trying to huck it at whatever's busy trying to eat your face. Aside from the console version, there was also a Game Boy Advance title called Kong the Eighth Wonder of the World. I like that they retitled it because it really does feel like a unique game rather than just a scrunched up attempt to get the same game on handhelds. And this one isn't bad either. In fact, I might even say it's the best game I'm going to talk about today. 
It kind of plays like an old Zelda title as you explore the island and enter various temples and stuff. You play as Adrian Brody, Jack Black, and Naomi Watts. Adrian Brody can use a variety of weapons and fight enemies, Jack Black can blow up impeding obstacles and push heavy rocks, and Naomi Watts can... <coughs> scream. And hey look, random pots! This really is like Zelda! <coughs> But seriously, you've got your overworld map and your temples. The temples involve solving puzzles and getting keys and items, and the mechanic of swapping between leaders to perform different actions, and in a few cases even having to separate the leaders to progress, keeps it pretty fun. Oh no, Jack Black! Watch out for that pitfall! <laughs> it's funny, cause... Cause Pitfall and, and Jack Black and... Cause, you know... Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. That was him and all. The boss of the first temple is this T-Rex, and I don't really have a joke here, but... I mean, just look at the fight. You just get to run back and forth shooting it. I just... I had to show it. It's funny. This may be the only game on the list where I think it's more fun to play as the human gang than as Kong, because all of the Kong sections are just these timed beat em up parts. They're not anything too special, but it's always somewhat satisfying to just punch dinosaurs in the face. Unless they've got a game up their sleeves for Skull Island, that's pretty much it for licensed King Kong movie games. But how about we dive into the animated series? Are you letting Kong keep that crown? You want to try to take it away from him? No, not that one. No, not that one either. That's the Netflix series where Kong fights robot dinosaurs. I feel like I should repeat that there is an animated series about King Kong fighting robot dinosaurs. I really feel like more people need to know about that. The one I'm talking about is this one from the early 2000s. You guys remember how America made its own version of Godzilla and not very many people liked it, but then they made a cartoon that was actually pretty awesome? Yeah, well, someone decided that Kong should get that same late 90s radical cartoon deal, and thus Kong, the animated series, was born. The game opens up with a bit of text explaining how this Kong is a clone made with this guy Jason's Jason! DNA, so they're mentally linked or something. Then, he and his grandma and his archaeology professor go to take Kong back home, but... Alas, I didn't know that Ramon intended to snatch the 13 primal stones hidden inside the temple and steal their powers. Really? Well, that sounds like it's on you. I mean, just look at that guy! The only way he could be any more evil is if you gave him a monocle and a white cat. This is one of those games where you have to carefully explore each level to find hidden objects in order to progress any. In this case, these hidden scrolls. All while dealing with fire-spitting piranha plants ripped straight out of Mario, T-Rexes that try and pull a come-at-me-bro tough stance whenever you hit them, and cartoonish minions that lose their pants, complete with red and white polka dot boxers. Also, as well, for some reason, why are these guys the same size as Kong? I thought I was supposed to be a giant gorilla, but with the scale in this game, he actually seems like he's on the smaller side. You can hit L in certain spots to play as Jason. Jason! But seeing as how he's slower, weaker, can't jump as high, and dies a lot easier, I can't really imagine why you would ever do so by choice. The first boss is this giant were-rat, and boss fights in this game are just awful. There's no fun puzzle or strategy to doing it. The bosses constantly run away from you, and if you do catch up to them, they just stand there guarding. I think I only won because I caught him in a loop. Once the were-rat is dead, we have to play as Jason. Jason! And head back to a museum in New York, which has the same indigenous bat life as Skull Island. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it's... It's Kong Island in this series. This is around where I stopped playing. It's just not fun to play as Jason. Jason! At this point, I don't care what happens to him. Oh, alright, fine. Let's just see the final boss of the game, alright? The final boss is a clone of King Kong, only I guess the human who donated their DNA for this one must have been Norman Osborn. And it sucks. And it's awful. And I'm dead.
But hey, don't be sad. What if I told you there was a second Game Boy Advance game based off of Kong the Animated Series? This time based on their full-length film, Kong, King of Atlantis. How about we just dive in and see how well this video game holds up? Like the last game, it just kind of opens with text, recapping a little bit about Kong, and explains that due to an ancient prophecy, Atlantis is back. What that prophecy was, and how it happened, eh, not important. But what is important is that Atlantis has a hot reptile babe as their queen, and she wants to recruit Kong to help take over the world. So we start off playing as Jason. Jason! Okay, sorry, I'll stop that. And we have to find our cyberlink, which lets us connect to Kong. Okay, that seems easy enough. Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> it's really not. Jason dies really easily in this game, and the controls aren't very responsive. I keep getting killed by these licorice demon tails. I figured out the better strategy in this game is just not to fight stuff unless you're forced to. Alright, so now that we've got the comm link, we've just gotta find Kong, and... I died, again. Wait, no. No, no, no. Okay, so... The comm link wasn't even a checkpoint or anything? Okay, I'm done. I know I may come across as unfair by saying that this is a bad game, when admittedly I only played for about 10 minutes and I didn't even get to play as Kong. But I want you to ask yourself. Really ask yourself. Do you think that this... ...gets much better? And on that low note, that's about it for King Kong games. The eighth wonder of the world has certainly had some ups and downs over the decades. The Atari game isn't bad, I'd just recommend playing Donkey Kong instead. The Famicom game is pretty sweet if you get your hands on it, or play the fan translation patch. Both of the Peter Jackson games are surprisingly good for movie tie-in games, and the animated series ones... Eh, if you're curious about it, I'd recommend watching the show and just skipping the games entirely. And I think on that note, I'm gonna wrap up this year's Kaiju Month. It was a lot of fun looking back at all these King Kong video games. I'm really excited for Skull Island next year. Can't wait to see what comes out of that. And now, to end this episode, please enjoy this clip of King Kong fighting Mechani Kong. For no other reason than I really wanted to show it in this video. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video and joining me for another Kaiju Month. I always have a lot of fun doing these videos, so feel free to let me know of any Kaiju video game topics you'd like to see me talk about in the future, or just give this video a like. If you click that TV down there, you can watch my Halloween special where I talked about Elvira video games. Or if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos, please consider clicking that subscribe button. If you want to support the show and have your name appear in these ending credits, feel free to stop by my Patreon. All patrons get access to an exclusive newsletter letting you know what I've got in store for the future. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care. Twas beauty killed the beast. Kind of a better line than talking about how he was killed by spinning glowing death orbs. <laughs>